morning, everyone. Good morning. It is a blessing to be here, amen. Amen. It really, really feels good to know that through the circumstances that we are bombarded with as human beings, that God is still in control of all that we know. And uh, it's good. It's a good thing. Be glad that everybody is safe and that everybody weathered the storm. And we got no reports uh, around the brotherhood that there were some among us that have gone on. We thank Amen. God for that. And we also thank God for uh, what he has done for humanity too. It's a good thing to know that God still takes care of the world in the way that he does. It's a blessing. It really, really is. What I want to talk to you briefly about this morning is uh, backsliding and leaving God. And I just want you to know that, uh, prayerfully, after we get through with what we are able to share with you this morning, that you be a little cautious about your soul. Um, the devil is very good at getting us to see that there are certain things we should prioritize. There are certain things we can neglect. Uh, there are certain things we can put off. Uh, but what uh, we need to understand as human beings first and as Christians is that um, don't believe that. Every day should be a day of priority. Every day should be a day where you and I are earnestly examining ourselves and seeking the truth. So we don't get caught out uh, because we never know. We, we just never know. The man was so wealthy that he built more barns. He had so much money through the things that he possessed and the things that he manufactured that he had to put them somewhere. So, so he built more barns. Mm -hmm. And he didn't physically do nothing. He had people that worked for him do it. But in heaven, on that particular day for him, because there was no day in heaven, but that particular day for him, because he was in the flesh, his name came up on God's fire collar, fire yeah. card of life, and God called him a fool. Yeah. He said, uh, today your soul is required of you, and you're thinking about building more bombs. Yeah. See, the devil can get you so preoccupied and get me so preoccupied with life and its successes that we don't realize that the time is ticking. And when you was uh, birthed into the world and I was born into the world through the birthing process, we all had a death date. Yeah. Uh, I know your gynecologist and I know the doctor and I know the emergency room or wherever you was brought into the world didn't tell you that, but with your birth date yes, came a death date. Yes. Yes. And uh, I know you thought about living. I know, you know, as long as mama was around, you was getting your milk, everything was fine. And I know when you got to that age where you started doing for yourself, I know you got preoccupied. I realize that. I understand that. But none of us think about a birthday for our death day. You're going to have some cake later on, you know, after we get finished here and everything. And it's going to represent those of us who have birthdays. But we better start getting birthdays for death dates. Yes, Lord. Because I think it would give us a priority. It would give us an urgency. We'll start playing around daily with the way we think. Because we don't have time. We really don't. We don't have time. Time is not something that humanity has a luxury of owning because God owns it. Amen. And at some time or another, one of these days, one of us is going to go home. Amen. So we got to be ready in the morning. When we get up, we may not come back to the address that we're leaving. Okay, so we just got to get that into our minds. Therefore, we don't have time to fool around. We don't have time to be messing around. And we definitely don't have time to have an attitude. Amen. So don't let the devil steal your joy and, and keep you from being focused because um, you, you, you're going to lose it. And, and by all means, you know, let's go over to Jeremiah. By all means, let's look that, you know, that God is not the person that you and I need to be leaving. He's not. I mean, when we finally find him, when we finally get to him, because there's a struggle for a lot of us just to find God. Because humanity is not walking around with a flashlight looking for God. So when we and those of us that finally find God, God is not the person to be leaving. Okay? Because he has done so much for us. And, and we shouldn't grow weary in our love and our affection and everything for him. 
He is not the person to leave. I, I can say you can leave one of us in this room. Yes, sir. You know, as often as much as lies within you live peaceably with all men. I mean, there are some relationships that we just can't stick with. But there's something about God, there's everything about God that we don't need to leave. Now, you may have to leave me, I may have to leave you, but we can't leave God. Amen. And the devil already knows that. He already knows and have already seen the wrath of God. And that's what God is trying to get us to be. Um, he wants to prevent us from seeing that of him, and, and that's his eternal wrath. And the devil and his demons have already, they've already experienced that. And, and if you read up on Satan and his origin, starting from Lucifer to who he is right now, you would see exactly what I mean. So remember, I don't want you to raise your hand, so I'm going to raise mine to represent some of you. Because some of us have left God. And there are some of us in this room today that are spiritually in and out. Yes. Amen. We have a yes. revolving door. It's a door with a hinge that swings both ways. Yes. And we keep boop, 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 boop. At some point, the angel, the death angel, is going to hold that door and you're going to hear it. You ain't going to hear it flapping no more. I'm talking about those smooth Western movie kind of things. We can bang in one way and bang in the other way. But at some point, the deaf angel is going to hold the door and you ain't going to hear it flat. That means it's time for you to exit. Yeah, let's go. See? And you can't be saying to yourself, I, I, don't, I don't want church anymore. You can't be saying that. David said, if I go to the top mountain, you're there. If I go to the bottom of the sea, you're there. No matter where I go, you're there. So when you and I say, I don't want to do church no more. First of all, you never was rooted in Jesus anyway because you don't even know how to leave God. But you're smart enough to say to yourself, I don't want to have a relationship with God anymore. I want to leave the church. See, that sounds better. Amen? Mm -hmm. I know it was going to get quiet. <laughs> I'm leaving you, God. See, in relationships, when we get ready to go, we build up our little nest, we get ourselves ready, and then we leave and we leave a note. Mm -hmm. Then we come back and confront the person we left. Then the next place we see one another is in the lawyer's office. With God, we say we leave in the church and then we give a reason why we leave in the church. Because mm. one thing about human beings, how many human beings are not stupid when it comes down to the almighty? Because see, we're part of the humanity picture. We're very cautious what we say to God when it's time to say something to him. We're very cautious. Because Jonah said to God, he didn't want those Ninevites in. And God said, you have every right to be mad. So when you get ready to leave God, don't say you leave in the church. Just go to God and say to God, you leave in God. So God can confront you with your issues against him. Because, see, you need to hear it. See, you're going to say general things about the church. And I'm going to help you with that because, I, you know, I've heard it. I don't like Mildred. I, I don't like Ellis. I, I don't like the teaching. I don't like the preaching. I don't like the Lord's Supper. I don't like that the collection is at the end. I don't like every time I turn around, they talk about that. To, see, you start talking about the characteristics of the church, but you notice you have still haven't said anything to God. Amen. It's always about what you don't like about the church that get you to backslide and leave because it's church issues that you have issues with. What you don't realize is everything that you complain about in the church is established by God. 
So if you have a beef with how the church is, you need to go to God and tell him that. Mm -hmm. Because it, it's better on your behalf if you confront God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like Job said, yeah. I just need to get this out of my head. Why am I being treated this way? Mm -hmm. Go to God so God can clear up your mouth. These people in Jerusalem, they had it made. They simply didn't know how well they had it, but they had it made. Now let's turn to Jeremiah chapter 2. This is my favorite book. Of all the books in the Bible, Jeremiah is my favorite book. And then I follow it up with First and Second Corinthians. But I love Jeremiah. You know why? Because God went over and over and over again with complaints. Mm -hmm. He listened to them all. And then he sent Jeremiah. And poor Jeremiah couldn't even take a wife. Mm -hmm. Couldn't even take a wife. I said, I don't even want you marrying a wife from the people. You know why? Because I, I'm done with them. So there ain't no need of Jeremiah taking a wife, because the wife that she, he takes could be the very same person that he's going to have in that list. Because there's one thing about God, when you get ready to leave and I get ready to leave, remember who you leave in. The piece of paper that's called a divorce, in man's mind, because it's a man-made document, God hates divorce, but we recognize people that are, what we say in divorce is we no longer have a relationship with one another. So in order, of us, in order for us to have a relationship with one another again, a marital relationship with one another. You only have to get remarried. Yeah. Yeah. Or nullify the divorce. Okay? When you leave God, you're saying to God, you no longer have a relationship with God. Yeah. Okay. God has something to say about that. Yeah. Because you're telling him to his face, you don't have anything to do with the church. So he has something to say about that, and rightfully so. Rightfully so. Okay, you leave with me. Let me say something. Are you aware that the very movement in the bones in your body, the very blood that runs pressurized through your vein is because of me and you're going to leave me? You can't even inhale and exhale if I'm not paying you attention and you're going to leave me? If you swallow, I'm the reason why it goes all the way down. And you want to believe me? Yes. Your feet oh holds up your body. Your knees holds up your thighs. Your hips keep the upper part of you together. And your peace of mind coming from me. And you got issues with me? Yes. And you're leaving me? I'm the reason why you taste food. I'm the reason why you hear people. I'm the reason why you talk what you talk. I'm the reason why you see the things that you see. Amen. And you're leaving me? The devil has yet in all your complaints given you anything that I have given you, but yet I am always the problem with you. Amen. 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 Y'all better say amen this morning. Amen. I am always the reason why there's something wrong in the church. Hey, yes, Lord. The job that you have, the money in your pocket, the pillow that you lay your head on, the cold water that you have in your refrigerator, the belt that holds your pants up, your underclothes that you wear, the chemicals you put in your hair. Yeah. The makeup that you paint your face with. <laughs> but I'm always the problem. Yes, Lord, and you want to leave me? Let's yes, yes, yes. see how far you're going to go now after this subject. Hey. <laughs>
in bitter faith that you have forsaken the Lord your God. And the fear of me is not in you, says the Lord God of hosts. You notice when you get ready to leave, and you start talking about what the church is not doing, you're not even afraid of what you're saying. You have no idea that you're just talking about God. And you're not even afraid. And where you going? Where you going? Well, I know where you're going, and you do too. You're going to adultery. You're going to fornication. You're going to lie. You're going to steal. Yeah. See, you're going to places where God is not going, Amen. and you know it. Amen. And you know it. Amen. But He's always the blame. <laughs> These people told Jeremiah to shut up. We're going to erect altars on high hills in our living rooms and where we want to put them. Be quiet because we already given God what we're supposed to give God. And if it wasn't for the wheel, if it wasn't for this, and it wasn't for that, he kept trying to get their attention. And don't you know all those who backslid, all those who didn't want to have a relationship, when y'all got to the end of reading this book, where were they? Where were they? You want to leave God? You think you want to leave God and live when God is life and life is in God? And if you're yeah. not in God, you will think you're going to live? Yeah. Jeremiah 3.12. Going to proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return back, slime Israel, says the Lord, and I will not cause my anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, says the Lord. I will not remain angry forever. Only acknowledge your iniquity that you have transgressed against the Lord your God and have scattered your charms to alien details upon uh, under every green tree, and you have not obeyed my voice, says the Lord. Did you do that when you left the church? Did you do that? Because it's always the church. These are your issues, not God. So did you do that? No, no, I didn't do that. Matter of fact, unless when I came back, I didn't apologize. I just came back and started sitting down. Let's turn to Ezekiel. This amazes me sometimes about the things that we get ourselves in trouble with. Ezekiel chapter 18, 21 through 23. But if a wicked man, there's some pages, a wicked man turns from some of his sin, a quarter of his sin, all of it. Half of this sin, I'd be good just for half of a man's sin. Ooh, here's that word. All of his sin. Which he has thought about. Fathom. Had a dream about. Have committed. See, once you have wronged God and I have wronged God, God calls it sin, mm -hmm. which you have committed and I have committed against him. 
And in order to return to God, you have to fix that, and I have to fix that. Because yeah. God ain't not going to play with. He didn't play with you when you left and when I left, and he's definitely not playing with you and me when we come back. Because yeah. the sin has to be done away with, yeah. which we committed. Yeah. That's why some people who come back to the Lord and never commit themselves to the Lord, never repent of it, still feel unholy. You know why? Because yeah. you never have a relationship. You never fix the relationship you uh, severed. Yeah. Yeah. You just showed up. That's all you did. You showed up and started sitting back down. It's against the law for me to walk up to anybody in this auditorium and slap them. Yeah. To put my hands on you physically. And there are laws that you can call 911, and when I get down to the jailhouse, they're going to attach that to me. Yeah. Look at me intently. That's what you and I do with God. You know. You know when he's going to fix that? On judgment. He's going to show you and he's going to show me how that felt. Unless we fix it now. Keep all my statutes. Yeah. And does what is lawful and right. He shall surely live. He shall not die. None of the transgressions which he has committed shall be remembered against him. Because of the righteousness which he has done, he shall live. Are you ready? For eternal life after making a sinful mistake with God, which is sin, are you ready to come back to God and truly repent of that where God won't even remember the slap in his face? Go ahead and hit me. I'm going to remember who it was that hit me. I'm going to remember David, the day that you hit me. And you know what, brothers and sisters, there ain't a thing you can do to keep me from forgetting that you hit me. Your father and my father has said something in his word that you can get me to have a memory loss if you turn your sins into righteousness. Yes. And that's something that you and I are humanly incapable capable of doing. But the creator of the world has said to you and me that if you spit on me, if you slap me in the face, if you don't want to have nothing to do with me, when you return wholeheartedly to me from that concept and that sin, I remember it no more. No more. Amen. And you're going to go where? You're going to go party. You're going to go drinking. You're going to go boogieing. You're going to go shaking it all around. You're going to go all and do all these lustful things. You're going to be in and out of the bed with this one and that one. You're going to be committing all kinds of fornication, all kinds of adultery. You're going to change your nature. You're going to be committing all kinds of fornicated acts. You're going to do all that. And all that keeps building up. Yeah. It keeps building up to the throne room. All those sins keep building up. And you're going to be doing what you want to do. And at some point, the foul cabinet of life is going to show up in the throne room with your name. Amen. And that's what you want to leave God for? Oh, that's your fun? It got so thick, it got so dark, it got so terrible with that boy. All of that money had gone. And he said, the servant in my father's house is living better than me. But in order to get back to my dad's house, when he see me, I have to repent. When he see me, he got to believe me. Because there's one thing about the prodigal son's dad. Yes, sir. He was no fool. Mm -hmm. The same father that gave him his inheritance and hugged him and kissed him had his arms opened up if he was right. Yes, yes, 
Let's turn to Hosea. Turn to Hosea. Chapter 11, verse 7. some person that don't know what he's talking about because he knows us. Mm -hmm. And see, God already know where you're going. Mm -hmm. He know where you're going. He know where you're going when you leave him. Mm -hmm. You think it's cute. You think you got some freedom. Oh, I can do what I want to do because I don't have to go to church no more and hear all that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Hosea chapter 11 verse 7. My people are bent. I'm backsliding from me. Mm -hmm. Though they call to the Most High, none at all exalt him. Lip service. Now, backsliding is the only, um, the de well, the definition of it is this. Backsliding means to lapse or fall backward in your relationship with Christ. To lose interest in following and serving the Lord. Let me say that again because this is how you get out the door. You simply just walk out the door. And this is true if you're going to be honest about it. You no longer have an interest in God and his church. It means to lapse or fall backward in your relationship with Christ. You have already been connected to him. You know it and he knows it. But then you lose interest in following and serving the Lord. Some Christians use the term lukewarm. Or faith that grows cold. That's when you're going to start finding those words in the New Testament. Because you're not going to find a backslide in the New Testament. It describes a person who is spiritually backsliding. The word backsliding is used 15 times in the King James Version. 12 times in Jeremiah. 3 times in Hosea. Now, turn with me to uh, 2 Corinthians 13. 5. Because Israel backslides. Yeah. And you know what happened to them 12 tribes. You know what happened to them? They looked around and was none. What about my brothers and sisters? They got to be with their fathers. Second Corinthians 13, 5. Every day, brothers and sisters, do this so you don't lack it, so you don't lose interest. Examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. Give yourself a spiritual test at the end of the day. Okay? Examine yourself. Just like you test yourself in school and you test your knowledge of things when you have to go get re-certified of certain things, give yourself a spiritual test. <coughs> Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. So if you fail the test, you're disqualified and I'm disqualified. So just know that. Know that. Now turn to Hebrews chapter 3. Turn to Hebrews chapter 3. We're almost home. Hebrews chapter 3. Twelve and thirteen. It says, Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil part of unbelief in the parting from the living God. Mm -hmm. So that's backsliding. That's what it is. That's what God is calling in the New Testament. The parting from the living God. See, when you lapse in your spiritual judgment and you start wanting to be somewhere else, you're departing from God. Yes. See, God has connected us. He has joined us together with him in spiritual likeness, in baptism. So when God sees us, he sees the family of God. Yes. He sees his son. He sees the Holy Spirit. He sees himself. So when we depart from that, God no longer sees us at all. Yes. Because God only sees sin as sin. He don't see us as individuals anymore. 
He sees us as sinners. So when we depart from the living truth with God, this is what happens with us. Know that, brothers and sisters. But exhort one another daily while it is called today. Least any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Don't let sin get your heart so hard where you can't even have somebody talk to you. Amen. Turn to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. <coughs> Hebrews chapter 6. Verse 4, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good work of God and the powers of the age to come if they fall away to remove them again to repentance since they crucified again for themselves the Son of God, and put him to an open chain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just, if you didn't understand that, let's just keep reading. Mm -hmm. For the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated, get deep, Holy Spirit, receives blessings from God, get even deep. But if it bears thorns and briars, it is rejected and near to being cursed, whose end is to be burned. Where are you going? Is that what you want to look like? Is that the end result of you want what you want in your life? Where are you going? I have some tips for you that will help you out. Spend some time with God. Get yourself, find yourself a prayer. And remember, just like bad habits, good habits are hard to break too. So get them. And it says here, memorialize favorite Bible verses. And recall them in difficult times. When Satan is on your back about something, pull up your favorite scripture so he can get going. And develop Christian relationships and someone to call when you feel weak. Brothers and sisters, when you're in trouble, call the saint. I'm not talking about a saint who gossips. I'm not talking about a saint who always has something, got something to say about something. Like, call somebody, man, that you, can, that you can listen and they can talk. It could be in the middle of the day. It could be 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock at night. Call somebody that's going to give you some sound spiritual advice. Because you don't want to lose your chain of thought. Because once your mind starts wandering, mm -hmm. and you start skipping away from God, yes. God is sitting right here looking at you. Yeah. And remember your relationship with the shepherd and the sheep. The shepherd is taller than the sheep. And any time that herd moves, he sees it. Any time your child moves from your peripheral vision, you see your child. Your child can be in a room with a million children. You can see your child move. So don't think for one minute that God doesn't see you start to look at other pastures. He noticed that you are getting closer and closer to the edge line. And he take that little hook on that rod and he pulls you back. And you know where he puts yeah. you when he pulls you back? He puts you right in the middle of the herd. Yes, sir. Where the strong sheep are. God doesn't pull you back to the edge where the weak sheep are. He pulls you in the middle where the strong sheep are. There are some Christian brothers and sisters that I am sorry to say, when you're weak, you cannot talk to. You can't, because they're not going to pull you close to their heart. Oh, don't worry about it. 
Go take a couple of aspirins. You'd be all right. Go find you someone who's going to hug you, pray with you, get down on their knees with you, and beg you to change your thought process. Because that's where you're headed. They already know what it's like to be God. See, a lot of Christians are not in tune with God. Amen. And I say that sadly. I say that sadly because they don't pay him any mind. Amen. That's why the Bible will say, be hearers of the word. You know, not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. There are some Christians who are content with just listening to the Bible. That's all. That's all. They don't want to do what the Bible say do. They just enjoy hearing it. It's just like a good old book. Yeah. And you know that I'm telling you the truth. See, yeah. the beauty about when speakers speak things like that, see, I know I'm not one of them kind of preachers that are so holy to now. Y'all have never heard me get up here and say, follow me as I follow Christ. <laughs> so I know what brothers and sisters are doing when they no longer come to church. Yeah. When you're not here on Wednesday, it's like you getting down. You having fun. Yeah. You having fun. You just ain't here. You having fun. You're smoking. You're drinking. You're having sex. You going to parties. You doing all that. Don't look at me the way you looking at me now. You know yeah. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> you think you just don't come to church and then you just don't do nothing else? Yeah. Come on, y'all. You know it. That's why it's so hard to come back. Because now we're guilty. Yes, That's why we don't want sermons like this. <laughs> we don't want those kinds of sermons. Because we want to clean it up when we get ready to stop doing it. And then we want to. <laughs> you know why? Because we're ready to come back. Yeah. There's no prayer request call. No walk down the aisle. No, I've said we just. <laughs> See? But what we don't realize is he didn't move. The relationship that was severed, he didn't move. He see the movement of the sheep. He seen you. And you didn't even sneak out. When you are not here and I'm not here, don't you know the rest of the sheep say, where's up? We say that about you. You say that about me. Because we all in one group. So when you're missing, bad. Yeah. And with those bad, it's tears because we no longer see you anymore. We know that you're with the wolves. Amen. And when you run with a pack of wolves, if you're not wolf-like, what happens to you as a sheep? You become dinner. Some of us leave the church and we get consumed by the devil. He chews us up and swallows us. Mm -hmm. He don't even spit us out. Amen, amen. And then we don't see it anymore. Amen. When I'm down at these agencies, I look at the despair in people's eyes. I see where they lost every single thing that was important to them. Their spouses have divorced them because of the addiction. Their children don't even talk to them anymore. And when they talk about what they have lost in their lives, they can't even say it without tears rolling down their face. Amen. And that's what Satan does when he takes you out of a room full of light. He brings you into his darkness and he consumes you. And it's all because you think it's going to make you feel good. Think about it. That's why people are not drawn to Christ. 
because they want to do what they want to do. And when you do those things, where you going? Where you going? Where? You got to die. Because this is not your natural state to be living in the flesh. You got to die. And when you die, you know what's going to happen to you when you die as a sinner? Hell is not a party, y'all. It's not a place where a whole bunch of y'all that think alike gonna get together and y'all just gonna be doing crazy stuff for the rest of whatever the rest is. Because in order to be rewarded for doing right, there must be a punishment for doing wrong. Yes, yes, So think about it. Think about it. You wanna leave God? You wanna leave him? Okay. And I'm not talking about falling down. You want to leave God? Okay. Okay. Every single one of us, every day, should give our spirit self a spiritual test. Every single one of us should be praying for every family member. Every family member we should be praying for because we know that at some, some point, some day, they're going to do it. God is going to call somebody. He's going to call somebody today. He's going to call plenty of people today. He's just going to say, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. And the death angel is going to come down here. And those people who don't believe in God, those atheists, they're the best, they're the best of the funny. Those are the funny. Because for every one of us who are human, who is in humanity, when the death angel comes, we don't know it's not Casper the friendly ghost. We're going to know we're going to know. Go to the hospital rooms. I've, I've, I've had an opportunity to experience this. Watch people die. Yes, Watch the struggle. They're trying to hold on to life because they know at that moment they messed up. Yes, And that the maker of the universe, the one that holds the soul in his hand, is now requiring those. Yes. And there is nothing to laugh about anymore. There's nobody to talk about anymore, because now you see him for who he is. Because yes. remember, to yes. die in the flesh is to go where the spirit is. And he who owns the spirit is the yes. person you and I are going to see. Yes. Well, people are dying. You, you, there's several people yes. that have had an opportunity to watch people die. Yes. You know that I'm telling you the truth. Yes. There are some of us that can't wait. We have a smile on our face. Mm. There are some of us who are fighting it because we've seen for the last yes. time what we're getting ready to see for eternity. Amen. And I'm not trying to say things to you to scare you. I'm just trying to tell you the truth that the end of your life is not going to be some fairy tale or some oh. fantasy. It's going to be real. And the very person that you thought was a joke because you went out there and did what you wanted to do is now going like this to you. Yes. And you will not get out of the palm of his hand. Amen. And let's see how funny it is then. Let's see what your accomplishment's going to do you then. Let's see what your party going to feel like. Yes, Think about it. Yes, you want to leave me? Go ahead. Where you going? Yes, Where you going? I would tell you, if I wasn't in the water, I haven't been in the water, I'd get in the water today. <laughs> Because you know what I'm telling you the truth. You know I'm telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. You know I am. Yes, Lord. I'm sitting here and I'm watching all these people. I'm listening to these talk shows. <laughs> I was watching some stuff the other night. And I don't watch the American Idol. I see things different. They're probably my own family. I was looking at that foursome that they did. These children were showing up at the stage. And I'm looking at how they are 
dress. <coughs> and I'm looking at their haircuts. Yes. And it was the women that I was looking at. Yes. Yes. And some of those women, I couldn't tell if they were male or female. Or female. <laughs> and I'm saying to myself, <laughs> the devil <laughs> has already did something that parents are clueless with. Amen. Yes, he Lord. already has gotten into the next generation. Mm -hmm. To the point oh, where your sons and your daughters God. are questioning their sexuality. Yes. When it's attached to them, Amen. they still don't know who they are. Amen. And as a parent, you're letting it be done. You're not saying nothing. You're not trying to get them any help. And I'm watching that on American Idol. Yes, yes, yes. Good God Almighty. When he can confuse the next generation, there will be none. Amen. Yes, sir. Good God Almighty. I can't watch this. As much as I love children, I can't watch this. I don't even know what to how to tell people to look like in Christ. Because these people are taking themselves apart. They're not even happy with who they are. Amen. Yes, sir. And the parents think it's something that they're just going through. <laughs> you have some parent that is telling you it's just a faith. Yes. Have you seen their children? Don't you know, brothers and sisters, that children, just like adults, when they lose their way, they can't find their way back? Don't you know if some of these children get deeply consumed by these things, they won't find their way back? And you know the tragedy of all of it? You didn't provide for them a safe home. Mm. Amen. You allowed the world to come into your house and dictate how your house should be run. Yes. Mm. So E.T. can't even call home. You was born a male, you were male. You was born a female, you were female. What else is there to talk about? Oh, it's the genes. Well, let me look at yours, Dad. Which gene did it come from? Your side or the wife's side? Yeah. <laughs> Who we gonna blame that on? Yeah. We won't come back. God knew it is hard that the Israelites were not coming back to him. And the tragedy of the story, when I first started reading Jeremiah, I was looking for a miracle. And I found a remnant. But I also found the majority of the people that God was talking about God. He killed them they wouldn't come back. And he allowed Jeremiah to spend all that time, 40 some odd years, and he had to even save Jeremiah at the end, because they threw him in the dungeon. They said, we shall send shed him up. And they tried to kill him, and it took a foreign occupation to save his life. Mm -hmm. There are some of us who are so far gone, 
that we don't want to hear it. Mm. We're not here. We have no intentions of coming here. We belong to the devil now, and God knows. Mm -hmm. So just think about it. Is that you? Is that me? And brothers and sisters, as we have experienced, when you sneak out, you're not sneaking. And when you come back, you're not sneaking in. Hi, how you doing, sister? Brother, glad to see you again. That's what I'm going to do. Because I see what they can't see, because they're looking this way. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. I'm going to say it audibly so the demons can run out of the door. Sneak back in. Tiptoe. And never said you were sorry to the Father. I hope I said something that has got you to think about Thought process. Because we can wander. We can get at a stage in our or in a phase in our relationship with God where we we start nitpicking. And we start saying, I don't want to do this anymore. The church this and the church that. Well, it's not the church, it's you. So what you do then, like I preached to you this morning, go to God and say that you're having issues with him. And then he's going to fire back. Don't start picking on the church. Because the church, the church can't change because it's attached to the head. Mm -hmm. The body functions only because of the head. Amen. So the church got to talk like the head, function like the head, and look like the head. So when you get upset with the body, go to the head. Mm -hmm. And stand up like a man and like a woman, like you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. Stand up in front of the body and say, I no longer want to have fellowship with the body. I want to go out and do my thing. Don't sneak out of here. Don't let this in your mind be the last Sunday just say, I don't want to do this no more. Yes. We ain't going to tie you up. We ain't going to put all kinds of chains and locks on you. We're going to hug you, pray for you, and let you leave. Yes. Mm. And we're going to look every single Sunday, every Magi live, every picnic, every, every, you look in the horizon to look and see if you're coming home. Mm -hmm. And when you come home, if you come home, we're going to say you need to fix something. Because mm -hmm. we notice you came two Sundays in a row. Amen. Yes, Lord. You got to say you're sorry. Because when you apologize to the head, you apologize to the body. Mm -hmm. So now I can hug you back where I hugged you from. Amen. 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 All right. I hope this is up. Let's talk about it Wednesday night. Love it. You know, we can have a good time and talk about it because it could fit you. You could be to the point right now when you're saying, you know what else? That's me. That's me. I'm, 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 I'm almost scared. I just don't want to do this no more. Okay? But you got to die. 904 has been uh, chosen for us for the invitation song. Let us stand now.